was a little kid and we went out far, far in a horse trailer, far. Let the horse out. He had his rope trying to chase it away. And then he closed the, the back of the horse trailer, got in his old truck and we drove away. And out behind us was this cloud of dust. That's what I asked him. Grandpa, what is running behind us? And he stopped, pulled over. Horse is right there. At that moment, my grandpa gave me a lesson. He said, the greatest test you can give yourself by having a horse, especially a wild one, is you take that wild horse all the way back to where you found it. You take off your saddle blanket, your reins, everything. And you tell your horse to go, to go and be returned to the land. At that moment, that horse is going to do one of two things. I grew up on the Navajo Reservation in a small home that was probably 600 square feet at most with a 30 square mile backyard. For me as a kid, that pile of red dirt, that uh, pile of nothingness is what sustained me. It fed me and kept me warm. It was all I knew and it provided. Like over around this ridge over here is where I, where I learned how to track rabbits. This was it. Old saddle. Dang, this has probably been here for like 30 years. <laughs> By the time I was in preschool, I already had three horses that were mine. I just had that early, early bond with them. I had a spiritual leader in my life who once told me, he said, I, I know you love your people. I know you love your land. I know you love where you grew up. And he said, I'm giving you counsel that the greatest impact you'll have on your own life and for others is gonna be when you move off the reservation. You can't tell me I gotta move away from the land that raised me. You can't tell me I gotta you know, go move off the reservation. I, I spent many days fasting and prayer and being alone. And I just basically asked one question. Is he right? And one day, I finally got an answer.
sadagon siya ardo it's ata asa na shanda ertsko bes behezni bes sol zen bego e bedinid Agora deixa. Você tem nem o rodinho. Hago, tô se perdendo. É pedindo. When I left, I was very fluid in the life I had had on the reservation. Now, I had to learn a whole new language of life. I had always envisioned establishing my own homestead and living off the land like I did with my grandparents. Now that foundation was gone. I had no path, no horizon to set my eyes on. My my early days of photography gave me some direction, but honestly, looking back now, I can see that I was mostly chasing recognition. This wasn't the reason why I should have left. It wasn't connected to anything deeper. New video has surfaced from the EPA of the Gold King Mine spill back in early August. For the first time, we're seeing exactly what happened that day and hearing how EPA workers reacted. In 2015, the Gold King Mine spill happened. The San Juan River, the most farmed on the Navajo Reservation, became toxic. And overnight, my people's water was turned off. And I got a small idea to sell some photos of mine. Maybe I could deliver a pallet of drinking water to a couple of families. Through five, 10, and $20 prints, we ended up delivering seven semi-trailers of drinking water. Wow, so this is all the water we got from all of your donations. This is awesome. That day, I saw a new purpose as a photographer, helping a few families was a lot more meaningful than all the recognition I could possibly ever receive. Oh. Being connected to the different generations and do my part by giving back, it's important to me. Our language, our culture, our interactions, they're shared and passed on through these connections. Have a gun, yeah. These years, the Let's put it on the front. Yes, here. The beautiful thing about a camera is that it's a tool that allows me to preserve my heritage and pass it on to the next generation. Wait, I don't want to go, I don't want to leave. In my family, our two kids are half Navajo and half Bilagana, half white. See the fog around you? Yeah, it's everywhere, huh? Yeah? You're happy to be here again? The only chance they have to know our language, our culture, lies solely on me. Every day, I just hope I am doing enough. My hope is that these images can inspire the youth. 
More importantly, I hope they can understand at one time our land was taken away from us. And just that story of Huelte. I, I just have the utmost appreciation for the land we still have. And as we roam about, as we go about, my hope is that we are what we're supposed to be, and that's caretakers of the land. Whenever I'm around wild horses, I simply close my eyes and I just feel like sometimes I don't need to take a photograph. I just get to spend time with them and we're not afraid of each other. They're in the last spot available with light. Look at this. That is insane. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. While horses survive the weather, the harsh conditions, they move together as a herd. They understand the importance of community, of family. And it's the same thing with us. We all have big questions. We all go through so much. I think sometimes we lose sight of our true beauty, that we can all make a difference. Turns out Grandpa was right all along. No matter how far I roam from this land of my ancestors, I'll always find my way back home. Save all your good luck, baby. All your good luck, child. They may be the only one that's gonna gonna save you from harm
Save up all your good memories Stick them, stick them high up on the shelf What do I got to do, mama Just to save it from myself kid I went just about everywhere with my grandpa man it was the coolest summers I've always had and my grandpa would always be driving like this with his hand like this elbow right here always on alert and you'd always be like you never know sometimes you always got to turn this way and so it's faster than be quick and he'd drive like this on the highway too I don't know why I was like dude grandpa it's like a straightaway why you gotta drive like this why not like this and he's like there's one reason why he goes like this. <laughs> oh, I missed that guy. My grandpa was cool as heck, man. <laughs>